Hey everybody, it's James Freeman. So guys, today I'm bringing you some slightly unique stories. While you're used to seeing police beat up and shoot members of the public, I bet you didn't know that it's starting to spill over and cops are starting to beat up and shoot one another. In the past month, two lawsuits have been filed in St. Louis, Missouri alone for cops beating up and shooting other cops. The first story is about a gang beating that took place in 2017 during protests in the streets after yet another police officer got away with murder. The four officers had previously sent text messages to one another talking about how happy they were that they were going to get to go out that night and abuse people. Well, these four particular officers happened to accidentally beat the crap out of an undercover officer. Then, after they realized what they did, they tried to cover it up and convince the officer that took the beating to keep his mouth shut. Officers Bailey Coletta and Randy Hayes, Christopher Myers and Dustin Boone all told a federal judge today they are not guilty. They're accused of beating one of their own colleagues, mistaking him for a protester, September 17th of last year. These were the protests after last year's acquittal of former St. Louis police officer Jason Stockley, who was captured on dash cam shooting and killing Anthony Lamar Smith after a 2011 police pursuit. The acquittal led to weeks of protests, which activated the St. Louis police civil disobedience team. That's where the defendants come in. The federal indictment says the accused officers expressed disdain for the Stockley protesters and excitement about using unjustified force against them and going undetected while doing so. The indictment even lists text messages among the officers, like this one reportedly from Christopher Myers. Let's whoop some expletive. Dustin Boone is documented to have texted, it's going to be a lot of fun beating the expletive out of these expletives once the sun goes down. Randy Hayes reportedly texted, going rogue does feel good. The indictment says once the officers realized they beat up one of their own men, that they tried keeping him from talking about it. Officer Bailey Coletta is accused of lying to the feds about it. The officers and their attorneys had no comment as they walked out of court today pleading not guilty. The St. Louis Police Department has placed the officers on unpaid leave. The name of the officer that took the beating is Detective Luther Hall. Hall's suit says that one of the officers who participated in the beating, Joseph Marcentano, has since been promoted to sergeant, showing that misconduct is not only protected, but rewarded by the city and department. So out of the four officers that participated in the alleged beating, Three of them pled not guilty, while Bailey Coletta, the female officer, pled guilty to a federal charge earlier this month and admitted to lying to both a grand jury and the FBI about Hall's arrest. Imagine that, police lying to a grand jury. In her guilty plea, Coletta admitted that she and fellow officers of the civil disobedience team ran into Hall downtown during the September 17, 2017 protest two days after the acquittal of former St. Louis police officer Jason Stockley on a murder charge. The other officers believed Hall was a protester, and officers tackled him as he was following Coletta's orders and getting on his knees, her plea says. Hall's lawsuit said that he was following protesters who had damaged windows and flower pots when officers began firing beanbag rounds at the crowd and using pepper spray, despite a lack of justification for the use of force. Hall also did not hear an order for the crowd to disperse before force was used. When Coletta and other officers arrived, Hall had his hands up and was getting down on the ground as ordered, when he was picked up and slammed down twice, the suit says. He was then kicked and beaten with batons and fists. Officers searched his backpack and destroyed his camera and cell phone, the suit says. After a SWAT officer recognized Hall, he was treated at the scene of his arrest and again at a triage center. He was transported to the triage center and back to the police headquarters by Krusen's driver. Krusen, the mayor, knew he was working undercover and told him as they rode the elevator upstairs, oh, they messed up your cute face. In public statements, Krusen supported officers' actions that night which included a mass arrest. It says she also later denied knowing that an undercover officer had been beaten. Hall was one of more than 100 people arrested that night, and his suit is one of at least three filed against the city this week. The suit seeks unspecified damages for excessive force, failure to intervene, assault, false arrest, constitutional violations, 
civil conspiracy, and other claims. It names the four charged officers, as well as the city, Crewson, O'Toole, and others. Another lawsuit filed recently against St. Louis police and the city of St. Louis was from an incident that occurred a few months prior to the protests. It was a classic case of shoot first and ask questions later, where it turned out the person being shot was a cop. In June of 2017, a chase involving St. Louis police and a stolen car came to an end near Park and Astra in the city's North Point neighborhood. St. Louis police said the suspects and officers exchanged gunfire. The lawsuit says three suspects inside the car got out and ran past the home of off-duty police officer Milton Green, who was in his driveway. One of the suspects pointed his gun at Green. Green drew his service weapon, identified himself as police, and told the suspect to drop his gun. The suspect ran. Uniformed officers arrived and ordered Green to drop his gun and get on the ground. Green complied, identified himself as an officer, and showed his badge. The lawsuit says the detective allowed Green to get up and told other officers Green was police. The suit alleges Green was giving the detective a description of the suspect when Officer Christopher Tanner arrived on the scene, shouted, drop your weapon, while simultaneously shooting Green in the arm. Green's family witnessed the incident. Green was rushed to the hospital for emergency surgery. Anybody that kept into that emergency room, I told them what happened. My story never changed. It's not going to change then. It's not going to change now. I told them what happened. Yet that was not the story provided by the then interim police chief that night. An off-duty officer who lives in that area heard the commotion, came out of his house to render assistance, and during the exchange of gunfire, he was struck in his arm. Green says he has gone through six months of physical therapy. He has a plate from his elbow to his wrist and lasting effects. It's numb. It hurts. Uh, these two fingers, sometimes I get the shakes. I get shooting pains through it. He says he can't do simple tasks around the house, and he can't do his job. Can't carry a gun. Can't, it's, I mean, tried to hold, to squeeze it. Can't squeeze it. Green became an officer to support his family and to make a difference in the community where he grew up. Guys, joining a terrorist organization or a street gang to try to change it from within is always a bad idea. It was, if you could save one life that day, feel like you did your job especially in the city of St. Louis. Now he's at risk of losing his home, and he isn't able to provide for his four children, who are still trying to make sense of what happened to their dad. I had my badge out, and they said, well, why did he still shoot you? And their trust is, 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 is rough. They're scared. Green's attorney, Javad Kazali, says the city's unwillingness to meet with Green left them with no other options than to file suit. And instead of taking responsibility and backing Officer Green, the city has abandoned him. This is the same lawyer that's filing at least one other lawsuit against the city of St. Louis for police misconduct and abuse. I think he's going to be doing pretty well financially if he's not already. You know, people always say that nobody's going to care about police violence until it happens to them. You think these two cops care now? What do you guys think about this? I mean, these guys joined a terrorist organization and then became victims of their own organization. You still think we should join the police department and change it from the inside? Welcome to the land of the fees and the home of the slaves. Just shut up and obey.